Well, where do we begin? 82 winners this season, already well on your way for a record, which was 100 from last year. The season in general at this midway point of the season, how, how are you reflecting on it? It's gone brilliantly, really. I mean, um, since the turn of the year on the all weather, the horses you know, have been flying and uh, you know, you're waiting for them to stop flying. And every week we seem to, to pull a few out of the bag, so it's, it's great. And in the winter, when you looked at the bunch of them, the yearlings turning two, the two-year-olds turning three, did you think, I think this is possibly the best bunch that I might have ever had? It's easy to say now that I did think that, but yeah, I did really, especially the fillies. Early on, we seemed to have no end of speedy, sharp bay fillies, and um, and it's turned out that way they, they are quick. But it, interestingly, I, I wasn't worried about the colts, but they seemed... Uh, there didn't seem to be many sharp ones, and we haven't got many five furlong colts really. Only probably looking for Linda is a real nice five furlong horse, but the rest are all coming into their own now, and yeah. and they've just been that bit later to developing. And about six weeks ago, I, you could just see them all coming together, the colts. So that that was good. Yeah, and so and you were saying to me earlier that a bit of a reflection that the quality of the horses of new owners, sort of a big base of them. You've obviously got homebreds as well, and you still going to the sales too. So is it? Do you feel like you've got a nice balance of sort of everything that you would you'd want from the horses in your yard? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're always looking for more quality and uh, and, yeah. and trying to cut out the the lesser horses. But that we all know that's uh, almost impossible to do. You're always when you've got a number of horses, you're always going to have a bit of a pyramid effect, mm -hmm. um, and you're always going to carry some not so good horses. But that's the name of the game. Mm -hmm. The the trick this year now will be because we've been sent uh, a lot of horses and they've done well, I, I think, and I presume we're going to get sent a lot more horses again next year. So rather than go out and buy a lot on spec and have them to sell, we're going to have to be a bit bit careful and think about it a little bit more this, this sale season. Yeah. And looking around the yard as well, it's very organised, very well-oiled machine. And I suppose 21 years now that you've been here, yep. do you feel like you've got to the point where everything is just working in place, you've got roles and responsibilities, just mean that makes your job a lot easier too. Without a doubt, I mean, I think big key to that is um, Lucy and Kelly, and mm -hmm. Kelly's been sort of running the office for a good few years now, but Lucy and um, and James, her partner, they, they've stepped up and, and, you know, Lucy's taken on a lot that I was doing. So um, that's definitely given me a little bit more time, not to relax, but to, to concentrate on the things that I like doing as well. So. Um, yeah, it's, it works very well. And in terms of what you really like doing with the with the two year olds, three year olds, older horses, what what is it really that you think that you've been able to really thrive in this season from a training perspective? Just had that little bit more time to to see the horses. Mm. I was thinking about it the other day, really. I mean, when you get people come up to see the horses, and you're watching horses on the gallops like we were this morning, and one of the questions that keeps getting repeated, and and it. In some ways, it irks you. But it's, you know, what are you looking for? What yeah. are you looking for when you're looking at a horse? And it's a hard question to answer because everybody looks at something different. But a trainer really only sees a horse move faster than a walk or a trot for seconds, maybe minutes in a week. Yeah. You know, when you piece everything together, because you've got, you know, especially when you train numbers of horses, you've got 10, 20 in a string, 30 in a string. Some people, so you're only seeing a horse flash by you for seconds, and you've got to concentrate and and see how that horse is moving. So, um, in, in, you know, without, because I've, I've got less things to th really think about on the running of the yard, it's allowed me just to concentrate a little bit more on that. And we, we, we do a lot of filming of the horses now that we never did before. So if I'm really, even if I'm not here or I really want to go back and just review a, a piece of work, even though it's for probably 15 20 seconds on a, on a piece of work I'm, you know I've got time to do that and we're able to do that and that's all been part of the the new um, new regime I suppose that we've slotted into our old regime over the last couple of years. Holloway Boy story which was one of the best of the season that you it was just a day out enjoy yourself and then it all worked out to plan that's that's magic that just doesn't happen does it? I know it was um, it was a little bit surreal and I, and I, you know, I go up to the spot where I watched the horses um, at Ascot and I like to be on my own when I watch, nine times out of ten I'm on my own, I just, I just that's the way I am. Yeah. So I went up there and I was so relaxed going up and I, I remember thinking, ah, oh, this is nice, we just watch, watch the, a horse race. Yeah, and, um, pressure as, off. Yeah, there was no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> um, but thinking about it, I mean, he was so relaxed in the paddock, he looked fantastic, he walked round like he owned the place. And um, 
and I was confident going up there that we'd run a nice race. We weren't out of out of place, but no, I never I never thought he'd, he'd pick them all up and uh, and win like he did. Yeah, you could um, you could uh, sort of poo poo the form a little bit, and but everybody all, we all do that anyway. Mm -hmm. When a, when an outsider wins, oh, this didn't run up to form, that didn't run up to form. You're always going to get that. But the third horse has come out and won a a group uh, a group race since, and there's been a bit of winners in there and he's come out and franked the form himself by finishing second in the vintage so I think he's a very good horse but now going back to that watching the race was great you know it was it was quite funny actually. When you've had such a great beginning of the season start of the season the midway point of the season you're looking into this this next part we've got York coming up do you are you the kind of person that puts pressure on yourself now feels like we need to keep up the momentum how do we keep consistent or are you more of a laid-back kind of atmosphere here? No I'm always you're always anxious that you've got to keep it up and and there's some big races coming up for york so you're anxious that those horses a they get to that get to the meeting in the first place and they're all in one piece as you've seen this morning you know we've had loose ones this morning and things can happen very yeah. very quickly with with horses as you know so there's always that uh, bit of anxiety there and um you know come the end of the morning like we are now you you've the horses are in and they're safe and they're yeah. sound for another day so yeah, I always put pressure on myself, and and plus when you're, I have a great, a good friend of mine has a, a good saying, greed is good, and the more you have, and the more you win, the more you want to win. Yeah. So um, yeah, no, I'm always putting pressure on myself. Probably, probably too much, really. Yeah, it gives yeah. you that good fire in your belly, especially York, the Ebor Festival being so close to home, such a is a is a pride place. You know, you want to do well at York. What's your relationship been like with the festival and over the years? I know you've had winners there, but it's it's a tough place to to get them because everyone loves at, to support it at York. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, it's a, it's fantastic. Everybody says, and it, and it, and it's very true. It's an amazingly run place. They're all all they can all they want to do. You know, William Darby and his team mm. and Anthea Mooreshead. All they want to do is um, is improve their what they're doing for the owners, the trainers, the horses. And it, to me, it's the best best run track in the country. Yeah. Bar none. Um, so, yeah, yeah, we've had our winners there and we've done well. I think we've had a winner every Ebor festival for the last five or six years. Um, this year in particular, you know, we're, we're leading the trainer's title there for, at York, which is quite prestigious in, in Yorkshire itself and yeah. very hard to, to get there. We're not, we're not there yet, but um, I think we're a few in front, so hopefully we can pinch a, a, ra a race or two at the Ebor meeting and keep, keep going. Yeah, and then just quickly touching on, on your jockeys, we've seen Clifford Lee here, Sam James obviously a massive part of the yard, Danny Tudhope who's just had a, a wonderful season, you must be very proud of, of the three of them and, and it also must add so much to the yard to have, the, to have to be able to rely on them all the time too, wherever you want them to be in the country. Yeah, it is, but you, you need that, you know, you see all the big yards have their pool of jockeys that they go to. Mm. I'm a great believer that one jockey doesn't suit all horses and, um, you know, Cliff and Sam are, are two different styles of riding, mm -hmm. um, so it makes you know I, I quite like to, to to fit them to the horse rather than the other way around. Um, Danny, we don't see a lot of Danny here, but yeah. um, he's obviously a big part of the team as and rides you know his first jockey to the Clipper horses and mm -hmm. uh, you know Danny's a great jockey and you'd love to have him here more. You went into Royal Ascot thinking that Dramatise probably your best chance of winner. Looking into next week, the way that you've seen Dramatise come from Royal Ascot into now. Would you be disappointed if she got beat in the Lauda? Very much so. Yeah, very okay. much so. If if she lands there in the form that we think we can get her there in, then um, she'll be hard to beat. I think.